I'm hitting the button. <laughs> I'm hitting the button to go live. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Bid Nerds. All right, my name is John Polnick. There's my name across the bottom. This is the Bid Nerds, the, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars on Cars and Bids and bring a trailer. I'm not by myself. We actually have some help today, Some, some an, an expert, if you will. Let's see if I can get the, the thing to work. We have my partner, Michael Deeb. How you doing, Michael? Michael Deeb. Good evening, JP. What's happening, man? We have third that, nerd. I know. Below your name, it says professional auction specialist, but I think today <laughs> you're now an audio specialist as well. For those of you who've been watching oh, yeah. the show, you may yeah. notice that Michael Deeb has an actual microphone today. He went out and stole one from Joe Rogan, and uh, right. there it is. He's got an SM7B. Yeah. Look at how fancy that guy is. Uh, yeah, Santa, bring it. Santa, Santa got off his wallet and hooked me up. So Is that what happened? Well, <laughs> yeah. holy Oh, hell. Yeah. Uh, I've got another <laughs> surprise from Santa today. We've got a third nerd. We've yes. got Sahan Fazy. Oh. Pillow is in nice. the house, man. Look at that. It's, uh, you know, here this, here's the thing. Usually it's third nerd Thursday. We are recording Friday's episode on Thursday, so it still works. Um, yeah. We're going to have a little fun with this. Uh, Sahan, how are you? Yes. I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me on, John. Hey, uh, thanks for being here. And just so everybody knows, I'm coming to you live from the Las Vegas Strip in beautiful downtown Las Vegas. I'm right across the street from the Fremont Street Experience. But uh, Michael Deeb is coming mm -hmm. to you live from San Francisco, California. Yeah. And Sahan is in Oakland, right across the bay. So you guys are both in the Bay Area. How cool is that? You guys are doubling up on the... Maybe that's why, I don't know, maybe, maybe Sahan's good luck for you, Michael D, because you sure started out poorly <laughs> this week. One of the things that we do on this show is we predict and analyze the cars, the most interesting cars on Cars and Bids and Bring a Trailer, but we also make bid predictions. What will these cars actually sell for? And we're experts, so we should know. Uh as evidence of this week, I'm much better at this than Michael Deeb. <laughs> but let me tell you, I had a horrible day, and he's back in the running. I, I, I thought he was mathematically eliminated for the week, nope. not having any chance of winning this. Uh, but I think he's trying to game the system. Some of the cars that are picked today are definitely in his category and in his favor. Yeah. So you, if you win out, if you guess every car correctly, oh. every last one, that is the only way that Michael Deep can beat me <laughs> this week yeah. uh, in the running. But that's let me tell yeah. you, in Bid Nerd's world, that is entirely possible. So uh, <laughs> let's go over let's go over the bids from yesterday and see. I mean, let's just talk. I got I got just, I just got my ass handed to me. I had no idea what the hell I was talking about. What happened? Let's JP, talk about the JP, do you know LL Cool J? Well, I mean, don't call it a, yeah. don't yeah, don't call it a comeback. Come I got on. I got one <laughs> pant leg rolled up in my knee. Don't call it a comeback. All right, so yeah. uh, starting off on my, cars my and bids, we're yeah. looking at a uh, 2011 <laughs> Aston Martin DBS. Um, I came in high at 79,000. You came in low at 70, and that car blew us both out. It sold for ninety thousand dollars on cars and bid. DBS Carbon Edition, really beautiful car. Um, Unbelievable! I'm so shocked that it went for that much, though. Holy cow! Yeah. Next Especially car was. Cars and bids. Yeah, right. That's that's pretty good money. Um, that's overbooked, by the way. So, uh, next car uh, out of Seattle, Washington, we were looking at a a gray market import, a 1993 Lancia Delta Integral Evo One. Uh, I said fifty two thousand. You said fifty five thousand. You kind of just bet the under. Car had a few miles on it. It was up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I was really damn close. That car came in at fifty two thousand five hundred dollars. I was five hundred bucks off a Yahtzee. Would have spanked you. You uh, were so close. That would have. Oh man, that would have given you an extra point. I don't yeah, the next one. car, the next car was the first car bidders is uh, done on P car. Uh, you and I both made fun of the platform, but we really liked the car. A '97. 993 Carrera 2, just a base Carrera. I love the color. You weren't as hot on it. Um, but I really thought that the low miles, the condition, um, and the nonsense, that this is going to be strong. I said 85. You were a little softer on the car. You said 76. That car brought 97,750 bucks. Imagine that, JP, wow. almost a almost hundred grand for just a regular C2. This is not an S. Wow. Yeah. That's really a hot five, car. No yeah. 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 Uh, you uh, know, no, on top of that, what's that? 
Was it? A, it's a '97. Oh, it is. A yeah, it's a burial ramp. Yeah, yeah, it's a burial ramp. Yeah. Uh, cool car, but but, but man, that's, more that's all the money. Yeah, that's probably right too. Crazy, huh? <laughs> All right, next card was a JP special. Um, yes. We were looking at that 88, 88 Saab 900, the <laughs> STG. Uh, this uh, is a really low car. Yeah, totally, right? So, uh, this car had like 58,000 miles on it, or I should say 150,000 less than every other Saab 900 left in the United States. <laughs> um, I was uh, soft on the car. I said 26,500. You were hoping this car was going to touch 30, JP. That, in fact, was your bid. That car stalled out on Bring a Trailer as $22,000. And this is remarkable because if I remember, there were a lot of bids and a lot of comments from like the Saab collector community. So you and I were both under the illusion somebody was going to step up and pay for that car. It really didn't. The car sold at 22 and I think, honestly, it was stolen at 22 That was a great buy for I whoever got it. These are up and coming. Yeah, that was my fourth win of the day. And then just to be nice, I let you have that 2007 BMW 328i wagon. What's nice, Sohan, is JP won this auction without having to buy the car to do so. Uh, I said <laughs> 9000 9, JP just cut me off at 8900 bucks, And the car sold mercifully for $8,500 before JP had to bid on it to make sure I didn't win. <laughs> You know, and this I car mean, has twice as many miles as the one I bought, and it went for more. <laughs> what? Is, how does that work? Uh, yeah. You got to got to got to love a wagon, apparently. But uh, I think uh, yeah. I think people are listening. All right. So oh, black on black stick and two wheel drive. That's why yeah, that helps. All right. So you are back in the running. Uh, yeah. This oh. is anybody's game. So let's get to the cars of the day. The most interesting cars on cars and bids, and bring a trailer today. What are we going to start with? Okay, so I'm excited to introduce this first car, Jade. This looking at on cars and bids, a 2018 Mercedes AMG GTR in that incredible green hell Magno, which is basically a metallic matte finish. Um, I believe, if I remember, this is like a $9,000 paint job for Mercedes-Benz. Um, this car has 7,600 miles, but you might remember just about two weeks ago, we looked at a car almost identical to this on Bring a Trailer. That car only had 4,400 miles on it, and it you and I were both bidding like 150, 160. That car sold at $123,000, which is remarkable for a two-year-old Mercedes a thousand miles that cost two hundred and two thousand dollars brand new so i thought it was interesting when i saw this car up in cars did that we might take a look at it just to compare one platform to the other this car has 7600 miles so it's really just three thousand miles more it's basically the same options uh but it's on a different platform it's offered at a brighton um ma what's that massachusetts uh brighton massachusetts uh no nonsense low mile amg gtr in that incredible green hell magno uh so han have you ever driven one of these things you know i've seen a couple of them parked outside of aa meetings but otherwise i've <laughs> <laughs> yes um, oh my was... god oh my god that's all awesome. <laughs> you know i have not personally driven one um but i can say that in all likelihood in the range that this car is valued, I'd probably buy something else. Mm, interesting. Yeah. And what would you get in that $125,000, range? What's your exotic or track car of choice? I mean, probably a G3, to be honest. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, or a, or, or a Turbo S of some sort. Um, right. But, you know, and then there are obviously classic cars that are that are amazing as well but but if i in that kind of ballpark uh you know a, a porsche would be my choice so Han, yeah. you know i i know what you're all about i know that you love big horsepower you're mr turbo everything ls the world if you could uh, yes start, you know, <laughs> uh, i obviously i am a porsche nerd and you know a g th we when we talked about this car last time we talked about how this is one of the closest things to a gt3 rs that uh, anyone else makes uh in its contemporary right. and this car but one thing that this car has over the gt3 is it has more power um I, I, and i think a lot more right michael deep oh yeah, yeah. yeah more power a lot more torque because of the kinda, forced induction yeah this to me feels like the sahan gt3 uh, and, and the car yeah. that uh, if anybody was going to be into this car, 
I, I could see you with your gold chains rocking this thing, <laughs> flipping everyone the bird, and just, you just shit yeah. all over them. Yes, I just swear to uh, swore them I, down. <laughs> I, you know, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I, I feel like um, there's there's a difference between a track car and like a, a, what I would call a freeway car, right? Mm -hmm. um, when when you're looking for really big horsepower and you just want to uh, you know, a stunt, so to speak. Um, you, you don't need to spend one hundred and thirty three hundred thirty thousand dollars to do that. Like you can, you can get a CTSV for thirty mm. grand, and then spend fifteen thousand dollars on it, and you know, blow the doors off everything on the freeway. Why would you so, go spend one hundred and thirty thousand dollars? So true. If it were gold, would that change your mind? <laughs> if it was, if it was champagne. Uh, yes, the champagne the room. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right. With some gold stitching just to bring it all oh, together. Man. All right. Well, Michael Deeb, what's your bid? Okay. So, JP, are you a glutton for punishment? We know that a 4,400 mile one on BAT just sold for 123000 basically undercutting us by about thirty grand each. Um, so, do we think that this car with more miles on cars and bids is going to bring more money. You know, what's what's the, the market on this thing is supposed to be $165,000. You know, you and I thought kind of uh, maybe a little softer than that, but that car sold, rolled at 123. I still think that was an anomaly and that, that even on cars and bid, bids, this car should bring a little bit more. Um, I still believe that these are rare enough uh, and desirable that somebody would want one. Um, Michael, so it's sitting Michael, right now. Don't you think that you could, if you rolled this car into CarMax, that they would give you more than 123? I mean, that's I would think be so. yeah. below, yeah. uh, tra you know, trade, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and John said that to me when, when we were watching the auction close uh, two weeks ago, that was the first thing he said. He was like, God, that guy just got ripped off. I couldn't believe that there wasn't a, re a reserve higher than 123 to protect it. Uh, yeah. So something was really weird about that. So even though this person had 105,000 on 12 bids, I still think I'm going to go 35 and it sells at 135. 135 and it sells. All right. Well, yeah. I'm just going to go with history and go under and go 134 just to go the under oh. there. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, if it didn't bring that on bring a trailer, why the hell would it do it on cars and bids? And I love cars and bids. Uh, Sahan, we'll give you the last word. What do you think this car is going to hammer at? I'm gonna go 127. Oh, he's Ooh. going even lower. All right. Okay. How does that feel, JP? To have somebody cut you off. <laughs> Still more than BAT, and luckily the competition That's true. is just between uh, between Michael Deeb and I. Luckily, Sahan. Yeah. Third maybe maybe Sahan takes all our points. I think uh, I think uh, Sahan I, should I, deduct a point from both of us uh, just to make it even. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's all right that's uh boy okay so that's interesting all right uh let's move on to the next car and this will be an interesting one to to come back and take a look at okay jp i'm gonna just we're gonna go through this car really quick i kind of made a mistake when i teed it up because this car is actually out of uh oh, sahan help me with this it's new new venop netherlands um i really didn't mean <laughs> to pick an inexpensive alpha from a land far far away um lance said it, i thought it was in the u.s uh really quickly this particular model of the 1966 alfa romeo julia super is called the bolino di oro uh which is basically a, a cosmetic upgrade over a standard julia super um so it's got a fancier grill it's got fancier interior uh it even has a gold um, Alpha uh, emblem in the C pillar, which Alpha carried on with that with the uh, GTVs they did uh, the Serpent and the Four Leaf Clover on the '69. Uh, so some really cool things. This is just a beautifully restored car. These cars came originally with a 1600 CC twin cam inline four with a five speed to rear wheel drive. This car has been upgraded to a 1750 motor. So you're talking about going from you know basically around 110, 100. 15 horsepower, probably up to about 120, 125. But because the engine's larger, you will definitely feel the torque. These cars are really light. I'm guessing this entire four-door sedan uh, probably weighs, weighs, comes in around 2,000 pounds. Uh, and this car, interestingly, um, has been true to um, some GTA-style adjustable camber arms and a limited slip differential, which would mean on a back road, this car would be really fun to drive. 
I love the shape of these because I think they're beautiful. But JP, just to give you context, when you're sitting in the driver's seat, and I'm just talking to Sahan, I mean even you, you can reach across, <laughs> you can reach across and open the passenger door, and you can reach across and open the rear passenger door without having to get out of your seat. That's how small the inside of these cars are. Uh, but the four <laughs> headlight design, uh, the sound that twin and making rev the lot out of these things. I love these cars. The trouble is, obviously, the Netherlands, uh, it's sitting at $21,000, but only on five bids. This, I, I think these overseas cars are kind of a mistake to auction here, at least an inexpensive car, because it just doesn't seem to make sense that somebody would spend the ten grand to in, import it. So I, I really don't know what the hell it's doing up here. But anyway, there you go. At Alfa Romeo, Julia Super, Bolino Diorro. Michael Deep, you're clearly uh, gaming the system here, trying to win out at the end here. Um, <laughs> you know that uh, I'm a bid nerd and I'm a car guy, but come on, man. What the hell is this thing? It's really neat. And it looks like a lot of fun, but all right. So, Sahan, what do you think of this car? I, I want to see you, you and I'm Michael in the Deep same boat around, as you. frankly. <laughs> this, I might have to sit in the back seat oh, yeah. or, and or some... <laughs> I don't yeah. know. So Han and I got out of this car. Uh, people start selling cotton candy and balloons because of the clowns rolled up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. That's that's awesome. I, you know, it's cool. Though. Look at this thing. It is. Yeah. It's really nice. Did you see the I, shot of the underside? Uh, I, I can accept that somebody really, really wants this car, that, and that's that's something that that uh, I'm. I've come to terms with, uh, you know, as a car enthusiast, is that something that's this clean and like uh, interesting. There's somebody out there that's absolutely in love with it, even if it's not you or I, John. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, you know, it'd be fun. I'd love to have it around. It'd be a fun car to tootle around in. I think it's a really cool car to tootle around in something like the Bay Area. Um, but oh, would yeah. this would would a thug even steal this car? Is this some something? <laughs> I mean, what do you even? You can't you know take this car and no, chop no, chop. No. What are you gonna do with it? No, no you could you could hotwire you could hotwire it with a biscotti, uh, but nobody <laughs> would steal a car because it doesn't have any. Come with an espresso machine. Value. That's what I want to know. If it, it does, it that's is the only an espresso way I machine. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where is the milk steamer? All right, Michael D, what's your bid? Come on, man. Jeez. Yeah, it's still, again, I apologize. Uh, the cool thing about this is the Bolino de Oro that model was never put to the U.S., so I think that's the only reason why it's stuck here. Uh, yeah, that being said, this, with the, with the accent. This, right. should be, this should be a $35,000 car that fit wow. the U.S. It's 10 grand to bring it home, so I'm going to say 25000 bucks, and uh, and it probably sells there. All right, uh, I'm going to say 26000 I don't know why I'm going over. That just seems like so stupid. Uh, but I'm giving, you, I'm giving you a fighting chance. I want you to catch up. Sahan, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to go 24500 wow. Yeah. All right, one up, one over. All right. Uh, I love it. Uh, All right, very cool. All right, cheater. Moving on. What's the next yeah. car? What do we got? Uh, Sylvester Stallone wants to come in and do this car with me, you, and Son. Uh, working at a no reserve 84 Lamborghini Yalpa. Um, <laughs> I, I tell you, man, even no reserve, you got to have some balls to put a car like this up there. No reserve, man. You are asking for trouble. A uh, super cool car out of Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, this has to be a gray market car. I'm not even sure if these were brought in legally. Uh, so, Han, do you know if they ever sold? these things in the u.s i'm not really sure um uh, anyway I don't, col- I don't yeah yeah it's in kilometers Thirty thousand kilometers jp translates to wow. nineteen thousand miles um this really just looks like a beautiful low mile extremely nice example um i would pick red as my first color but this one is so beautiful uh the silver wheels and the black leather interior i i just this thing it screams 80s exotica uh, could you imagine going to Radwood in this freaking car? You would just yes. blow the doors. You would tear yes. the roof off of that show. This is this is gold uh, in that regard. Um, there's a cool video, JP. I don't know if you got a chance to listen to it. The guy uh, has an in-car camera and he drives it. And um, actually, Sahan, you'll love this. This thing sounds like an American V8 when he revs it. That 3.5 liter V8 doesn't sound like a tinny little 308 Ferrari. It sounds more like a an American, a domestic V8 from that era uh, that just revs a little cleaner and a little higher than you expect. Uh, so it's awesome. really neat to, because I have no experience with these cars. It's really neat to hear one in motion as he just drives it down the road. Um, 
I don't know what else to say about it. Really cool car. You don't see them very often. Uh, this one is a gray market, but it seems to be on an American title because there's a Carfax. So there you go. There's your opportunity to get unobtainium. Saad, would you buy this car if it was less than 100 grand? Absolutely. The car is amazing. Um, yeah. It, yeah it, it, like, it's all the things that, uh, that, uh, that I am into. Um, I, the eighties, like vintage vehicles are, um, uh, some of my favorites. I love the boxy, uh, shape. I, I yeah. love the idea that it's like, uh, a domestic sounding V8 makes oh, me happy right. in all kinds yeah, of ways. Cool. Plus nobody has it. So well, I, right. it's amazing. Yeah, very the cool. The fact that this thing is a Targa just really gets me going. Uh, you know, I, I think I've found my new favorite Lamborghini. I, I, I yeah. got to admit, this is a car that you don't think about. And, guy, you see something like this one, you're going, oh, my gosh, where the hell have I been? This is amazing. What a JP's new car. Italian crush. Yeah, yep, it's yep. true. I want that thing. Uh, I don't think my uh, I don't think my budget is for. I think maybe I can award a Volkswagen thing. Uh, I don't think I'm getting yeah. a Lamborghini <laughs> anything anytime soon. Uh, but this one sure would be on top of my list if I could. Michael D, right. what is your bid, Mister Italian? Yeah, so so good question. Um, so JP, this car is at sixty thousand uh, dollars, but on just eight bid. I don't think it's that the car's not getting a lot of action. I just don't think it's such a polarizing rare car. I just don't think there's a lot of action to be had for such an unusual model. That being said, I still think there's a little room left in this thing because where else are you going to find another one that's that clean and and yet? I would feel better knowing that it's been driven and that there's at least a few miles on it and that it's not just been sitting and suffering from atrophy somewhere in this country. Uh, it looks like this car has been run some regularity and it just looks to be in good shape. I think $73,000 is going to bring it home tonight, tomorrow afternoon. Wow. That's it, huh? I'm uh, that yeah. That's amazing. I think that, Good Lord, if you could get this car for $73,000, I think this car has way more panache than a Countach or any other Lamborghini that you could, almost any other Lamborghini. That, I mean, this is, this thing's cooler than a Mira, honestly. I mean, right. You, it's I, way I, rare. Yeah, if you've ever been to Monterey Car Week, it's like, oh, okay, there's all the mirrors. They just show up. This car, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't yeah. remember ever yeah. seeing one of these, right? Uh, so, honey, yeah, I can't. Would, I mean, would your head stick out of the top? I, of does it make us? A hundred percent, and also yeah. like let's not forget the, the espresso is is ready to go uh, mm -hmm. when you buy this vehicle. Yeah, yeah the espresso factor is real. I, I think it's a super cool car, um, and like you said, it, it, the the rarity when you get a car like that, you don't want to show up and see five more of them at the car right. show, and and that will never happen with this car. So there's value in that. How insanely unreliable something like this. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I, mean, I don't mean to be, you yeah. know, I mean, I just, yes, you yes, have tell to us. have a, a Lambo, a classic Lambo mechanic <laughs> on speed dial. Uh, to, totally. I mean, are you getting where J you're going? Are they really no. that bad? JP, enough? JP, <laughs> you live in Vegas. You gamble for a living. Go ahead and buy it, man. Come on, what could go wrong? <laughs> maybe I can afford that. Uh, I, maybe I'll do what Sahan says and just yeah. LS the world, right? I mean, totally. this, this is just the perfect car yes. for an LS swap. Oh my God! Yes. Sacrifice, <laughs> All right. So uh, your bid somebody's was rolling what? over. What did you say? Seventy what? Seventy-three thousand. Seventy-three thousand. We'll bring it home. Thousand. Holy cow! Yeah. Sahan, what do you think? You know, I, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come in at seventy-four thousand on this. Because, nice, uh, you know, strong. I think it's that cool. Yeah. yeah. Deeb, you're a dirty, right, dirty cheater. I'm going under. I'm going to say 72 just to be that guy because let's, uh, uh -huh. let's, let's let's do a little man sandwich with Michael Deeb. And, uh, I'm going to be <laughs> under. There's not a lot of action on this. I mean, eight eight bids. It's yeah, weird. but there's just no audience for it, JP. There's not eight people in this country right now. Out of 330 million Americans, not eight people in this country that even want a Lamborghini. Six of those bids were people just showing off for their girlfriend. Look, I'm going to buy this Lamborghini. No and he knows it's going to go for more. Yeah, there's no, yeah, I, I wind up bringing it home like a BMW X. Yeah, well, it's a good thing I bid under you then. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's move. You know, before we go to the next, we've got two more cars, right? We've got the last car yeah. of the day, and then we've got cars. Two more. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about 
our sponsor, Guys Customs, G Y X <laughs> underscore Customs on the Instagram. They are the makers of these unbelievable bracelets. These are custom made for guys who love machines. The uh, we're looking right now at a. Uh, there's two different bracelets here. One is the Guards Carbon. Uh, titanium. The, we shot this photo in a Ferrari super fast. I just love saying an 812 super fast, super fast. That's just so super fast. So Han, you need one of these bracelets, don't you? Agreed. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that thing. I do. Look at that thing. Uh, and then there's also the carbon murder. That's actually my personal favorite. But the red one, the guards red one, is actually paint the sample for a Porsche red guards red. So you can order these bracelets to match your car, to match your watch. They will paint the beads specifically. Their actual paint the sample beads. Uh, these things are every one of them is handmade. Every one of them is made here in America, and uh, they're made. You know, actually, they're made right here in Las Vegas. So get yourselves <laughs> a guy's customs bracelet today, or order one for your for someone uh, for Christmas. You know that there's this holiday thing coming up. Guys underscore yeah. customs. That's G Y X underscore customs on Instagram. Get your bracelet today. All right, let's get back to the cars. G yeah. JP Sahan not only needs a guy's custom bracelet, I think Sahan needs an 812 super fast. I think he does. Yes, it's certainly yeah. that. I, you yeah. know, if I had, if those bra bracelets were around when I had the Spearmint Rhino, I would have got a Ooh, paint to match with the evergreen. Yes. <laughs> yes. The, the, the evergreen uh, Z3M coupe would have had yeah. a matching bracelet. Oh, 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 very nice. Well, okay. Sahan, if you wind up with a with a certain uh, 325XI uh, in what Does is it that, come reflex with one? silver, uh, maybe we can get, <laughs> right. maybe maybe we can arrange to get you a reflex silver paint the sample uh, bracelet to go with it. All right, what is the next <laughs> call, it. Michael? Uh -huh. All right, we're gonna jump back on to bring a trailer and look at a 2001 John Pollock special. This is a <laughs> Jeep Cherokee classic. Yes. Um, uh, 62,000 original miles. So I assume that somebody died and had no relatives and nobody knew that guy was dead for 40 years and this car's been sitting there uh, for 19 years in the garage because most cars get 62,000 miles in the first 36 months. Um, I don't know. If ever there was a carpet bag salesman vehicle choice to get across uh, the middle of this country in the winter, this was it. A four liter inline six with a four speed slush box automatic dual range transfer case uh jp quick question did yep. they ever make these in two-wheel drive or are all absolutely. jeeps like no, this no, all-wheel they drive they are two there are some okay ones, yeah. all right but this one's an all-wheel drive with the dual range transfer case uh the blue metallic color is kind of cool um but i just it's so funny john looking at the photos i can sense that sensation of being a passenger in one of these things on the freeway and the car is vibrating and rattling <laughs> at 60 miles an hour i'm not sure we're going to make it to wherever we're going these cars uh it's funny how the drivetrains are bulletproof the cars are put together like garbage uh, i i just have such a disdain for these vehicles it does nothing for me not even from a standpoint of nostalgia I dislike that. I hate that you picked it. There you go. Uh, $7,500 dollars $7, on a ludicrous eleven bids. Who wants this thing? You know, this thing is a Jeep Wrangler of the same of the same era, and it, the only it's basically the four door Wrangler before there was a four door Wrangler. This is a four door. Is, is that same, right? It's the exact same chassis. It's the exact same. Ah, chassis. that explains a lot. Room. Um, yeah. They are Way amazing more. off road. Uh, they are mm -hmm. not anything to really look at. There's no doubt about that. Um, yeah. But but bulletproof, yes, you're right. You're getting across the country in one of these. You're getting anywhere no, totally. in one of these. If it breaks, you can find parts at almost any Shucks Auto or Riley's or whatever auto parts store you're going to find in America. You can re you can repair it with gum and, and rocks and all that kind of stuff. So, Sahan will appreciate this. Growing up in the Bay Area, Sahan, I've been a passenger in that model of vehicle and <laughs> gone to Tahoe for a weekend with the guys or the gang M numerous occasions. I've just never owned one or, or really dated anybody that drove one, so I just don't have any experience driving the damn things. But I've had plenty of cousins and friends that have had them. 
uh, and, and people drive them into the ground. I mean, you just regularly see them with 150 to 300,000 miles. Yeah, I think sure. part of a little bit of vision and a little bit of experience. Uh, both mm-hmm. John and I have owned Jeeps in our day, and, uh, and and to John's point, like they will go anywhere. And this car, well, as it stands, isn't much to look at, but with just a little bit of redneck love, this car will <laughs> be everything that yeah. you want it to be. Yeah. It just needs some 44s and minimum minimum 35 inches on there. You know, yeah. you throw some mudders on there to give it a lift and, you know, a monster sticker on the back that thing's worth <laughs> 10 grand easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely need some, hey. need some energy drink stickers for sure to complete. Oh, uh, I, I, I see, I see <laughs> so hard. I see Sahad baiting the hook for JP. He just told JP I can make twenty five hundred dollars. Watch this; he's gonna bring it home. Yeah, going to get it. Going to get it. Uh, this car, you know, it, I can smell how bad it smells. That the, the one thing you can buy is, is a Jeep leather of any kind or pleather of right. the vinyl. That is just absolutely awful. I will say that in good condition. They actually drive quite nice. They're actually quite comfortable, yeah. better than any Wrangler. That's another thing that, unlike you know, even mm-hmm. though it's the same sure. same chassis, uh, having a roof and having more rigidity and stuff like it's that. Rigid, it's rigid, yeah, just exactly. A nice little get around SUV, but yeah, not exactly something that uh, is going to get you anywhere in a hurry. Uh, Michael, D, <laughs> I can this? smell it. Yeah. Uh, so I think the car that smells like cat food and Doritos is going to bring God twelve thousand dollars. I mean, where do you find another one like that? Uh, that's um, really that clean and that low miles. And, and I, I know there's huge fans of the Jeep out there. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I'm going to say 12,000 bucks. And I think, I think that's legit. Uh, so Han, what do you think of this thing? You know, I, I think there's a guy waiting around with the monster sticker, ready to put it on. Totally. And he, and, and he, and, and the guy is going to pay a solid $12,700. Another undercut overcut. Yeah, you know, guys, I don't know. I don't think this thing is clean. I mean, I'm looking at it, and it's you know, it's out of Pennsylvania. It, it, it doesn't look like it has too bad. It's not too bad on the corrosion side, but there is a lot of little just nicks and just nastiness that makes me again, you know, that smell is indicative of what this car is going to be like. I just don't believe in this car. I think it's actually kind of a piece of crap. Um, I would love to find an actual <laughs> clean one of these. If I found a clean one of these, I think you see the actually, excuses are coming. I, I, Isn't it amazing? Uh, I, the undercut, <laughs> you see, the excuses with the undercut to follow. Yep. My, yes. my, my toenails are already starting to hurt. He hasn't even given his number yet. <laughs> I don't think this thing breaks 10. Oh my Honestly, God. Even with the low miles, I don't think it matters. I just don't think it matters. You can find a cleaner one with higher miles and that's going to be worth more. Uh, and I'm certainly going to look for a manual one, but uh, yeah. This, yeah. Which bid? What's your bid? I said the uh, 99, 99. Okay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? So hot. I crap all over it and then I overbid. He says how amazing they are and then he won't even bid 10,000 bucks. Chicken. I said how amazing uh, they are, <laughs> not how amazing <laughs> this one in particular this... <laughs> is. Awesome. Okay. Uh, skills, nuance. J- yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Listening. Oh, uh, all right, Jay, we actually have, we have one more car to do before the pick of the weed if we can squeeze it in. Oh. We do. Okay. We have more. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. One last car. Uh, so we're going to bounce over really quick to cars and bids uh, at Altadena, California, uh, which yes. is way down south. Yeah, um, we're looking at a no reserve auction for a 1988 Mazda RX-7 convertible. Um, really cool car. There you go. What, do you, yeah. what can you say? Uh, it doesn't look to be a turbo. Um, it does have 121,000 miles on it. Uh, I didn't do a ton of research on this car. Uh, but only the uh, the known flaws that Doug DeMiro lists are cosmetic um, and, and something to do with the wipers, but I think that can be fixed pretty easy. Excuse me. There is just uh, some nice recent service between 2018 and 2020. Looks like there were about a half dozen trips to uh, get some things fixed. Uh, so this car mechanically should be in pretty good condition. A 1.3 liter rotary with a, a manual five-speed rear-wheel drive. Uh, I always remember this being poor man's 944. Uh, JP, I, I'll be stunned if you tell me you didn't own one of these things. What do you think? <laughs> I did actually own one for a while. And I knew it. <laughs> that is exactly what it was coined as the, uh, I mean, it was really, it, it was never really put against the 944. It was always pitted against the 924. 
Uh, that was the big thing. You know, they always advertised this car against the 924S because they were yeah. both of the same era, that, you know, kind of 86, 87. Uh, right. This car continued, whereas the 924 different didn't. Uh, the rotary engine, I mean, at 120,000 miles, if this engine has not been rebuilt recently, it is going to need it. The rotary mm-hmm. engine is a very simple engine. It's, it has far fewer moving parts, and rebuilds used to not really be that big a deal, but now there are very, very few people that know how to do it. Sahan, have mm-hmm. you had any experience with rotary engines? Uh, you know, I have had several RX-7s, as it turns out, including oh, an wow. S4 FC. Uh, this is an FC RX-7, uh, which is the second generation. This is an S4 FC, which you can tell by the tail lights. The S5 SDs, which came in the later uh, 80s, have like a, a round, they have like a round, uh, round, um, like a, the tail light section in the fixture um rather than the two rectangular pieces but um uh <laughs> this car is amazing this car is amazing i love this car i had a first gen and a second gen r7 uh i had a turbo uh, second gen uh these the the convertibles in particular um have like you know they're, they're just rare uh they're hard to come by I, I, this is the gxl mike uh it doesn't freaking say Okay. I mean, um, give me. I mean, if, if it looks clean, like this car is pretty tight. There's not, mm-hmm. there's not a ton of them that like are well taken care of. And 125,000, um, obviously, to John's point, the motor is probably, uh, you know, n- may need some love here shortly. But really, what you're looking for with a car like this is, you know, is the body clean and straight, which most of them are not. Yeah, and, you know something. Something to be noted about the RX-7. You know, their thing. The thing that's always made the RX-7 an interesting car is the balance. That engine. The the fact that it's a rotary engine makes it very like this kind of square thing instead of a long inline six or you know or even mm-hmm. a V6. It's this weird kind of module that sits way in the back of the engine compartment. So the, most of the weight is right there, pretty much in the middle of the car. Uh, so these mm-hmm. things don't weigh a ton, and uh, they get a lot of performance out of them uh, the light that burns twice as bright burns half as long kind of like a turbo so those rotaries do take a beating they the the rpms on these engines is way higher than your standard uh, internal combustion engine so that's why they kind of take a beating but uh boy what a fun car rev happy all kinds of good times uh, i do love this generation of car and uh, i think with a convertible top you're just going to have a good time with that um you got a bid there michael deed yeah, I mean, drive it like you stole it, right? Isn't yeah. that uh, the RX-7 way? And sure. uh, JP, JP, in the in the history of bid nerds, have we ever been more bid dirty than at 8.30 at night with Sohan nuancing taillights on an RX-7 convertible? <laughs> I, I thought, I think we've, we've reached a new plateau. We just set the bar high. Thank you, <laughs> Sohan. You are worth <laughs> waiting gold, my friend. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that was freaking amazing. I love it. Um, yeah. JP, I think this car is going to jump from – it's a no reserve auction. I want to remember that. It's at $5,400 on 10 bid. I think this car will bring $7,500. Okay. You know, I'm – yeah, I'm going to go – I'm going to – I believe in this car. I mean, 120 – you don't see a ton of these. I think it has a lot of sky to go above that. I'm going to give this car. I'm going to give you a, a bunch of room to beat me here. I'm going to go ten thousand. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, all right, all right. Yep. Think, okay. Easy there, part. Using yeah. the whole fist, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think. Already. Nice. When was the yeah. so on, was the last time you saw a clean FC like this? I mean, they just. If I'm a hundred percent honest. FC, well, RX-7 is something that I type to Craigslist every time I check on wow. So it's like one of the 10 things that I'm constantly checking out. Um, yep. And like, I, I haven't, I have seen these cars go from, you know, seven to $10,000 basically is like what you're looking at for, for a convertible that has a clean body. Most people that have this car are going to end up doing a turbo swap or whatever anyways. Like, uh, right. Um, so, you know, what they're looking for is a clean body, um, maybe with a little bit higher miles so that they can do the, you know, do the swap and get into it a little cheaper. Um, so I, you know, it, it might have to come in. Where are you at, Dave? I said 7,500. You know, I'm going to come in at, I'm going to come in at 7,900. Nice. Very good. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All, All right. right. 
Yeah. You okay. Know, I mean, boy, I, Sahan, do you really think <laughs> someone's going to swap the engine on this thing? Is this, I mean, this one's yeah. so clean, isn't it? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. What I meant to yeah. yeah. say is absolutely. Not monetized well, met, yeah, yeah. Um, for those uh, for those of our audience that don't speak Persian um, or Farsi, uh, what he said was, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's what yes, I thought. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes. to your point, John. <laughs> You said that you said the motor is probably going to pop. Yeah. So one of those apex seal, one of those apex seals is on the way out. <laughs> so you know, in the next twenty thousand miles, one of the apex seals is going to go. It's going to give you those beautiful plumes of smoke. All RX sevens give you after enough time. Um, you know, whether they're it white like or you're black. Driving a freaking jet ski when you drive one of these things, it smells like a. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah. But it sounds like a helicopter, yeah, which right. is. Yeah, the coolest part of that. <laughs> That's a great analogy. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, JP, do we have time to do the pick of the week while we have our yeah, third let's, nerd? Yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's get our third nerd in here on the uh, car of the week, the pick of the week. Another All right. Cheat so, our boy absolutely. Cheater. Yeah. Dirty, I, dirty cheater. Good lord. <laughs> I love I love all things Italian cars the way you love convertibles, JP. Don't don't hate the player. Mm. Uh, we're looking at a, a '68 Ferrari Dino 206 GT. Um, this car is offered at Emeryville, California. Uh, Spencer Trenery is running the business uh, called Fantasy Junction for his father, um, uh, Bruce super family really nice uh they've got this cool shop right literally uh walking distance from where sahan lives uh this is in emeryville so it's wedged in between where sahan lives and berkeley really cool car uh the early dinos are aluminum body and that's what makes these things so neat this is actually a very lightweight car uh so you're talking about a two liter twin overhead cam v6 mounted transversely midship in this car it's got a five-speed manual gearbox but the two liter is an aluminum block with aluminum heads whereas the later cars the 246 dinos that came as gts and with a removable target top referred to as gts's those cars had a steel body and those 2.4 liter ferrari engines had an iron block with aluminum heads so what makes this car so neat even though it only makes about 180 horsepower cars are actually really light and and this car jp when it showed up in 1966 67 and 68 these cars were every bit as good down the road as a, a 911 and 68 maybe a 911 s this car could absolutely give one of those a run for its money uh so really cool car uh the other um, really neat point about these early ones uh john is that two liters have knockoff wheels um again these were meant to be you know like real sport sort of almost track car um the whole reason uh, ferrari was making this car ferrari's son alfredino died of leukemia at a very early age he did go to engineering school i believe in turin and his thesis statement to get his doctorate in engineering was a 1.5 liter double overhead v6 and this motor is a punched out version of ferrari's son's motor design and ferrari wanted to race the car i think in formula two and in order to homologate the car, he had to build 500 units, which Ferrari could not do at the time. So they sold the plans for the motor uh, to Fiat. So alongside the Ferrari Dino, Fiat made a Pininfarina side two liter convertible and a Bertone designed coupe with also the same two liter engine. And that helped Ferrari produce enough units to homologate the car, which it later did in sports car racing very successfully. Um, so a tribute to Ferrari's son, there should be no teen horses or Ferrari badges anywhere on the original cars. Ferrari wanted this car absolutely to be sold as Dino in his son's honor. Uh, and these aluminum body cars are now really starting to take off. You can find a nice Dino 246, either a Coupe or a Spider. Uh, for now, about as low as 200, 250,000, all the way up to 400 grand. But these early aluminum cars have really taken off. Uh, the nice ones are 600 to $800,000. So with 14 hours to go, this car is sitting at $555,000. And I would suggest that there's probably some blue sky above it. This is one of just 150 aluminum two liter Dinos. So, Han, you ever driven one of these things? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one i like that no, no i have not oh, oh, man. no no the only aluminum blocks i know are ls's 
<laughs> All right. well uh, in my range right that there. was that so that's called a humble brag uh because we know we know michael deeb has driven one of these and neither the other uh, the rest of us have and he knows that but oh have you driven one oh. <laughs> yeah oh. remember exactly. in, remember in ferris going to, yeah, if, like, you, whatever, dude. if you ever <laughs> hire the uh, 250 california if you ever have the opportunity i highly recommend it you know yeah so <laughs> yeah. what is this um, car that like to drive uh michael deep since you actually have been behind the wheel of one of these it's it's actually really cool so uh the, the, the car the motor is awesome it, it's right behind your ears jp there's no back seat in this car so the motor is really pressed up against the back of your skull and they have chain driven cams and there's essentially four crams across the top of this car it, it's just it, it's freaking awesome it really does feel like a race car when you when you move it out the uh the, the gated shifter needs to be warmed up you can't drive the car fast when it's cold it has to warm up but once you once you drive it if you if you can spend an hour behind the wheel of one of these things um you get the hang of moving it through the gears uh the balance is great uh, the steering is pretty direct and uh because the car is light the motor feels torquier than it actually is uh, 180 horsepower but probably only 140 pounds foot of torque but with you know maybe 2,100 pounds or something or 2,200 pounds these cars just they just go and and they just sound incredible it, it, it it's um it's the sensory you get you know what you hear and what you smell and what you taste and what you feel it, it's it's greater than the sum of the parts um and and that being said a really nice put together early 911 a, a, a short wheelbase that's in great shape or an early s uh will give you a similarly cool feel but there is something truly special about these it feels like it's hand built the cars are just beautiful i i freaking love them so i get a question for sahan since um neither okay so we both know that this car is going to go for some seriously big money but if they were worth the same which would you rather drive that the the lamborghini that we uh talked about earlier the yalpa the jalpa <laughs> or would you prefer to be behind the wheel of the Dino? What do you think? You know, so, so Han? the Han can't answer that question unless you tell him if he can have an FLS in the Yalpa. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, honestly, John, like I, the Lambo, I, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I like, like I said, I, I, I'm, I, uh, I, I really, really uh, appreciate and enjoy um, you know, eighties, eighties cars, uh, and the, you know, hence having several RX seven and, and eighties you know, BMWs and uh, they're just great. I just love it. Um, uh, you know, also when you were describing driving that car, I couldn't help but think of John's Volkswagen thing and how similar it felt driving that. <laughs> <laughs> <Totally. laughs> you, you had to warm it up to drive, to get it to oh, yeah. gear. It, you know, it took uh, several hours to learn how to drive it, um, if, <laughs> if you could at all. Um, and, First you know, the motor here. was behind you. Second is here. Yeah. Third <laughs> is here. Uh, for, Truth. You know? Yeah, that's where it is. <laughs> the question is, did we get five? Did you get five hundred thousand dollars plus for the thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure the the Dino is. I mean, not having driven either one of these, either the Dino or the or the Alpa, I'm sure the Dino is the the driver's car. And as a driver, you got to go that route. And obviously, it's worth all the money. So of course, that's the car that you want uh, in your garage more than the more than the Lambo. But I, I I'm kind of with Sahan from a from an aesthetic and nostalgic point of view. I'm definitely leaning towards the the Lambo. Uh, I, I really <clears throat> would prefer that car. Um, just from the way it looks. Uh, yeah, there it is, just for fun. I thought that was an, it would be an interesting exercise, but let's get back to the Dino. Michael Deeb, what's this thing going to sell for? Uh, yeah, so like I said, some of these aluminum cars have been bringing big money. Uh, this car should easily be 600. This one looks really clean, and Fantasy Junction has a great reputation. So with all that in consideration, I'm going to kind of step on my Johnson a little bit and, and bid high. I'm going to say 680000 Six hundred eighty thousand dollars. Sahan, what do you think? Well, you know, I mean, the question is: Is this car worth as much as a, as a condo in San Francisco? And six hundred eighty thousand dollars <laughs> sounds about right. Uh, yeah. You know, That's let a go. One bedroom let... on the bottom floor, isn't it? I mean, oh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's the question. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then when you put it that way, then all of a sudden, six hundred fifty thousand dollars seems like a pretty good deal. Um, so I'm gonna go with six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Right. Yep. And I'm gonna go right under there and say six hundred forty just for fun. <laughs> I'm going under on it. All right. Uh, what an amazing right. car, though. Maybe the most beautiful car in the world. I, I agree. I, I think it's 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 one of the prettiest designs of all time. Yeah, Stunning for sure. All right. Well, there it is. I mean, is that the uh, is that that was the last car? That was the car of the week, right? Car of the week. Yeah. All I'm right. Made. Well, looks like we made it through another episode of Bid Nerds. <laughs> we had uh, a, a third nerd today. Thank you, Sahan at Persian Pillow on Instagram. Thanks for being part of the show, Sahan. Anything else you want to say or any shout outs uh, before we sign out? Thanks for having me, gentlemen. I appreciate the opportunity to. Uh, you know, join you guys for the evening and shoot the shit. Uh, you know, have a conversation <laughs> about, about cars. I love it. So, Han, you big stud. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for joining us. That was fun. You know, Michael Deeb gets a fancy microphone and then he gets suddenly good at being a bid nerd. I don't know. I think he might win out. He might win out. He's a dirty, dirty mm-hmm. cheater picking all these Italian cars. And we all know he's the Italian car expert, but uh, I wish him luck. Let's see if he can catch up tomorrow <laughs> on the auction block. See if these cars uh, where we get the wins and losses here. What a good time. This has been a great week on bid nerds. Thank you all for joining us. Make sure you like and subscribe and share the channel to your friends. We're a brand new channel. So we're getting the word out here. We do this every day at around the nine o'clock hour in the morning uh, on Pacific time. Bid nerds. Also, you can find us on, of course, Instagram and Facebook and YouTube's and all the platforms. So <laughs> spread the word. Bid nerds, <laughs> your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Good night, Sahan. Later, friends. Sahan, Take it easy, guys. Sahan and, and Deeb, I'll be seeing you guys in just uh, tomorrow.